This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. You know the combination. You're listening to Music of the Mat on the Voices of Wrestling podcast network. Hello and welcome to Music of the Mat, the podcast devoted exclusively to the music of pro wrestling. It's all part of the Voices of Wrestling podcast network. I'm your host, Andrew Rich. This is episode 69. Nice. And it's going to be another grab bag of New Japan pro wrestling themes. And to help me do that today is, appropriately, one of the hosts of the Super J cast, which is all about New Japan. It's Damon McDonald. Hello, Damon. Welcome back. Hi, you brought me back. Uh, Rich, I can't believe it. Uh, Andrew Rich, that is. Uh, I, I refer to people with uh, only their last names now. On. That's my new thing. I didn't know if you knew that. It's amazing. Uh, now, it's, the pleasure is all mine. I'm thrilled to be back because this is one of my favorite podcasts. I was talking to Andrew before we went on that I'm, you know, I'm going to play the exclusive, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the high priced talent to, that, that'll, <laughs> that'll pop a house. So, uh, but I'll only do that for the uh, exclusive few. And, and uh, this one is one of them because it's one of my favorite shows. I love the idea and I love talking just music in general with Andrew. So uh, I'm thrilled to be back. Well, I am honored, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's great to have you back on the show here. Uh, we were supposed to do this actually before the Fighting Spirit Unleashed weekend, but uh, your voice wasn't up to it, unfortunately, so we had to move some things around there. But uh, here you are now, uh, fit as a fiddle. Well, and, I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> fit as a second-hand fiddle, I guess we should a say. A stand-up bass, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in any event, i got to say, it was great to meet you again. Uh, in Lowell for the New Japan show. Uh, we met up beforehand and talked for a little bit. Uh, some podcast fans came over to us and uh, showered us with praise, which was very nice. <laughs> uh, but that was that was really cool of them to do that. It was really nice. And uh, then afterwards, we went to the uh, venue, and I met Ishii there, which was just so freaking cool. You took the photo, and uh, then the show started. And, you know, it, it wasn't a show of the year contender by any stretch. It was basically like a road to show, but... Still, ton of fun to watch live. No bad matches. Pretty much everyone was over like a motherfucker. Crowd was hot all night long. Time just flew by. And those are the best kinds of shows, Damon, you know? Oh, no doubt. Like, the whole weekend was that, and especially up there. Again, had a great time with you. Uh, we had a couple we had a couple adult beverages, which is nice. Well, and, you did. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, it's very, very true. I probably drank enough for all of us in that bar. <laughs> I felt like I got there a little early. You know, you kind of want to... You want to settle down some nerves before you have to start chatting away. Um, but everybody was cool. And, yeah, the show was fun. Uh, again, I don't think there was anything groundbreaking coming out of it. But um, aside from Naito taking that clean as a whistle pin that shocked me. But um, I had fun the entire weekend. And, again, uh, everybody that we met up there in Lowell uh, helped play a part in that. Um, and, of course, when uh, I hop on with uh, my co-host, Sean, uh, Sean. My God, Joel. His name's Joel Abraham. I've only been doing a show with him for two years now. Um, we'll uh, we'll discuss more. But yeah, what a great weekend. It was a great time. And um, I would definitely go back up there. It wasn't too bad of a commute. Uh, but it was a fun venue. Tiny venue. Um, not a bad seat in the house. And the crowd was tremendous. You know, it's, it's, the, uh, when, you, when you are watching a, a good to f- really good wrestling show, but you're in a venue and a crowd that's just up for everything and having fun. Um, that could that could put it over the top, and it helped. I mean, I remember when the show started, they played the New Japan Company theme, uh, which is the score by Emerson, Lake, and Powell. And I was just grinning from ear to ear because it hit me then that I wasn't watching a Global Wars show or a War of the Worlds show. I was watching an authentic New Japan show in my home state with Young Lions matches and Red Shoes and all the big stars and Tanahashi, you know, ending the show with the air guitar and the Aishtamas catchphrase. 
it was just really cool to experience that. Yeah, yeah. When you hear those that that tune, uh, and again, it's really. I, I always talk about how music does that. There are certain things in certain bands, and thir- you know, I'll. Why would I ever listen to Emerson, Lake, and Powell? You know, what I mean, uh, it, it's just not good. It's, that's not in my, uh, not in my wheelhouse. But that song, you know, I guarantee you, is on a playlist somewhere on Spotify that I have, um, just for that sole reason. So. Yeah, it felt good. It, 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 I love it when uh, you start getting the taste of the, the real authentic dish that New Japan gives, and you felt like you were at a real show. And yeah, just to have it just, you know, a couple of miles from your house had, you know, it's an awesome. Sunday was mine, you know, I'm 10 minutes away. And, you know, in a building that I've been to a million times, and, and now my favorite pro wrestling promotion from Tokyo is, is, is running a legitimate show there. So, no, it was great. It was a great weekend, and, and, uh, you know, those are the kind of memories I'll take to my grave. Yeah, I do want to stress that you also went to the New York and Philly shows as well mm-hmm. on the tour. And uh, there were some snafus with the New York show uh, starting very late, mm. unfortunately. But uh, I watched that show on New Japan World, and I read uh, some live feedback from the Philly show. And by all accounts, those shows were still a ton of fun. And the crowds were still hot for them, and they still enjoyed them very much. And I know you'll cover all this in uh, greater detail on the Super J cast, of course. But I'd say, you know, overall, uh, the weekend was just a big success. Yeah, I mean, the buildings we knew what they were—they were, were going to pull down, you know, when it came to house. And we know Lowell had a few sheet seat short, and um, Hammerstein sold out well in advance as well as Philly. And Philly had a couple standing rooms, but yeah, you know. um, great weekend. You know, it's just, it's. It's kind of like what we live for, and it delivered, and I kind of did a little East Coast swing, and I got to meet all kinds of cool people. So, you know, Monday morning kind of sucked <laughs> when you had to come back to reality. <laughs> but uh, for three days, you know, it was it was as fun as what's going to get. It, it rivaled Tokyo, let's put it that way, uh, and the fun and the shenanigans we get into there. So um, I love it. But now it's music time. Yeah, it's time to uh, put on the music Damon cap, you might say. Uh, where we'll be uh, doing basically the same thing we did last time you were on here, Damon, which is uh, talk about a grab bag, a a hodgepodge, if you will, of current New Japan pro wrestling themes. And uh, you know, Damon, the circle of life is such that we say hello to new themes and we say goodbye to old themes. You know, we had to say goodbye this year to Kushida's theme, to Kenny Omega's theme, Michael Elgin's theme, Izka's theme, amongst others. But uh, along came new themes to take their place, like the G.O.D. theme and uh, John Moxley's theme and Kenta's theme and El Phantasmo. So, you know, even though we've had to say goodbye to some heavy hitters here, there will always be that influx of new themes to enjoy in New Japan. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the great things. And when you get themes that connect with you on a new level, I mean, you talked about the first one, the Kushida one. You know, that's obviously an oldie and a goodie in my bag. I mean, that's one of my favorite themes of all time. To lose, that hurts. But, yeah, I think we have some good ones here as well. Um, I don't know if any of them will will, will equal in my heart Kushis. But um, there's a couple that might be close. Let's put it that way. Okay, okay. So we've got 10 themes here. Uh, most of them are by Inosuke Kitamura, except when noted. And we're going to start off with the current IWGP heavyweight champion, the golden boy himself, Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. And Okada has had pretty much the same theme since he became the Rainmaker, just slightly different versions of it over the years. Yeah. His current one uh, debuted this year at Wrestle Kingdom 13. It's called Rainmaker Next Level.
So Kitamura has gone on record saying that this song is his masterpiece. And it's hard to argue with him because it's pretty much perfect. Uh, from that opening coin drop, the song just screams Okada. You know, it screams confident and cool and superstar. And when you hear that riff, you know, dunna, 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 dunna. When you hear the percussion and the beat and the squealing guitars, and you see Okada come out with the jacket and the blonde hair and the belt and the jewelry, and he's just oozing charisma and star power from the get-go, it really is a match made in heaven there, Damon. Yeah. I, I love it from the opening. Yeah, I mean, just from, as you said, that initial little coin drop rolling. Um, I have a lot. I kind of, and if, if you listen to the last one I was on the, of this show, um, I do reference music all the time, right? And like feelings that I get from the wrestling themes and how it kind of correlates with bands that I like and, and things that I and things that connect in my head when it comes to music. And that coin drop reminds me a little bit of uh, one of my favorite bands, Depeche Mode. Um, and they have uh, a song uh, behind the wheel, right? And it starts out with like a, almost like a hubcap rolling and then it goes into that beat. Right, that uh, it kind of reminds me of that. That's that's the kind of the first feeling I get with the coin drop in, in particular. Um, and then there's those little muffled oohs, you know, underneath in the very beginning. It feels like the first ten seconds or first fifteen seconds for me is almost like a highlight, right? And, and not to say that the song goes down, but like the, that first ten seconds is just like, yes, here we go. Uh, and yeah, like you said, there's high pitched, like there's high, I guess. B- guitar bends i guess they would be right where they you could just feel the tension in the, in the fingers of the guitar player just bending those squealing those notes um i call this one the, this always reminds me of uh a band called stabbing westward right it feels like like if if new japan had recording artists do the remix like a lot of bands though like this would be the stabbing westward remix that that's the first thing that i would think of when i hear this uh, particular version the save yourself band you're saying yes 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 yeah it just has that feel almost i don't want to go so far as to say industrial but um it does have that um i don't and again not maybe maybe mechanical is not the right word word but it does feel like uh there's that somewhat um again industrial is the first thing that would come to my mind that i know people that listen to that genre are yelling at me but that's kind of what i feel i kind of just feel like this is this is the stabbing westward remix okay well uh i don't but uh it's your opinion (laughs) that's fine that's fine um i remember in lowell when this song hit the crowd just went nuclear easily the biggest pop of the night and i heard from john carroll who was also at the new york show that it was the same there too. You know, Okada and Naito got the biggest reactions by far. And part of that is Okada himself, because it's Okada. He's a giant star. He's awesome. But another part of that is the song, because it's a great fucking song, and it feels like a really big deal, and it gets you pumped up, and it's driving the whole way through, and it doesn't take forever to get going. It just starts off with a bang. Again, it's a masterpiece. You know, it's like the perfect wrestling theme there, Damon. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, uh, as we'll find out later on, you know, there are certain things, little pet peeves that I have in, in wrestling themes in some cases. Um, this one, even though there is a little bit of that, and I won't necessarily spill the beans on exactly what that is. I'll talk about that later. But um, there does seem to be, like, cur- especially in current themes, there is a... a, a um, a common denominator, and that's that. I'll call it right now that 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 heavy distorted sludge guitar sound. Um, that most, well, I won't say most. That a lot of themes have that kind of just like Ugh, this again. And not that this has that, but it's you can see where it could it could it could dance a slippery slope and and fall into that real quick, but it doesn't. And that I think that's what I enjoy about it the most. I think as well, it's definitely the song for an ace, because Mm -hmm. an ace is supposed to be confident, and he's supposed to be someone you take seriously as a top guy in the company. And this song certainly feels like a confident song, 
and a no nonsense song for a top guy like Okada is. Who, you know, and Okada could be a little goofy at times, sure, but overall he is the ace of New Japan, and he does take that role very seriously. Yeah, and I think also it's it's almost. I think a lot of the, of the best themes give you uh, the fans when you're hearing it that moment where they can kind of sing along or pop along, and those you know. I guess it's on the quarter note, it feels like, you know, that, yeah, you know, and everybody can kind of, you know, pump their fist in the air, give a good little, ah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there are there is that little bit of moment in there that, that there is that fan interaction where they can kind of sing along and tap along and clap along. So, yeah, it's epic. It's great. And, you know, it's worthy of, of, of a championship and it's worthy of a top guy uh, coming out to it. Yeah, and I think comparing it to another ace theme, uh, Tanahashi's high energy, I think it's cool how it reflects their differences as well because both songs are rock songs and they do have that high energy, no pun intended, but uh, Tanahashi's theme is that classic 90s pro theme where it's epic rock guitars and synths. It's from a past era, whereas Okada's theme, it takes that epic rock song motif and does it differently. You know, it feels fresher and newer than Tanahashi's theme does, which is true for the wrestlers themselves. You know, they're both aces, they're both all-time great wrestlers, but Okada is fresher and younger than Tanahashi is by about a decade. Yeah. That's weird that, like, like, that you mentioned that, because I would think writing pro wrestling themes might be one of the m- most hard things and most difficult things to do. Because it's not like you're writing a song, per se, about how you're feeling. You're writing a song to kind of convey to an audience to help perpetuate a a narrative about a, a particular character and a particular and where they are and you know even when you think about like how people graduate and move up the ranks and they get new fresher m- more epic shall we say themes um and for this company to have two very iconic themes for two very iconic wrestlers but yet both conveying a similar message but maybe not in the same way that that that's a lot of talent <laughs> you know what i mean to be able to pull that off and to be able to do that is pretty remarkable without the use of lyrics to to convey that this is all through song and through music but not necessarily having the luxury of having lyrics to help that i find that amazing Theme number two is for the most recent member of Los Ingobernables de Japón, and uh, one of my favorite wrestlers in the world as well. It's the dragon, Shingo Takagi. Uh, Shingo debuted in New Japan at last year's King of Pro Wrestling, and has been an absolute beast ever since. Former junior tag champ, undefeated for eight months, and his theme song also debuted at King of Pro Wrestling, naturally. It's called Rising Dragon. So this one, uh, like Okada's theme, is the no-nonsense rock song, but it's it's definitely a, a different flavor of potato chip than Okada's theme is, because it's not trying to just be cool and confident, it's meant to be totally badass, which it is. You know, this is a badass theme, so much heavier in tone as well, and that is so appropriate for Shingo, because he is a bad motherfucker. You know, his whole thing is basically, I'm a warrior. I'm going to hit you really hard, and it's going to look really awesome when I do. And if you could distill that sentiment into song form, it would sound like this, Damon. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. And it's weird because 
I had I, my notes were taken because we were supposed to record this a little bit earlier, and it was before the shows that we just went to. And my notes, I'll read them exactly what I got. I have thunder in the beginning, dot dot dot. Uh, love that thick low string chum 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 chum, right? Um, but I said overall, my the theme was an eh, and I thought that this theme wasn't. And we talked about being deserving of the wrestler. I, I didn't feel that, right? Yet, I'll tell you what. Hearing it live and and seeing him come out, and maybe it was just the magic of the weekend or whatever it was, but I I, I had a different, I was singing a different tune after that. And I just remember that moment watching him come out and hearing the tune, I think it was Philly, when it really hit. And I was just like, God damn, this is a good one. Uh, and I just remember the notes that I took and, and this show, and I didn't. So, again, maybe it's like one of those things where you hear a song, you know, on an album, and you're like, okay, it's an all right song. But then when they, the band does it live, you're just like, holy shit, this, this song's great. And, and, and that's what it was. It was like almost like the live version, the live experience helped perpetuate uh, this song being greater than what I originally thought. I love the intro so much with the boom and the thunder in the background. It really sets the scene in my mind of like an ancient battlefield where the fight's about to begin and you hear the thunder in the background and it's like the storm is almost here. Then the song kicks in, you know, and here comes the warrior, you know, here comes the fight. And that kind of matches Shingo's entrance, too. You know, he comes out, he walks to the ring, he does his little praying pose that he does, and then the bell rings, and it's on. It's not like he's running to the ring screaming from the opening minute, you know? There's that that grace period beforehand where he's calm and level-headed and preparing to do battle, and then, boom, let battle commence. It's, it's like he's showing proper respect to his opponents before he just, you know, pumping bombers their heads off Damon. yeah and again live it just i don't know it just it, it brought another level to the song for me uh, maybe it was you know everybody going nuts for him that helped do that but yeah uh you know like i said i i i, I the notes yeah it's pretty dull shame he needs better and then walking out of that arena and again i remember the notes i mean just a, a visual picture in my mind thinking well oh, You'll take a big fat loss on that one, Damon, because you have, you have now had a, a mind change uh, from from hearing this live. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of similar to his Dragon Gate theme as well. Uh, I brought this up on the uh, Dragon Gate episode with Mike Spears that I did a little while back about how uh, Shingo's New Japan theme sounds a lot like his uh, Dragon Gate theme, uh, Legend Falconry. It's that same kind of mix of the modern rock and metal sound with the more traditional elements than there, too. And that's Shingo, you know, he's the modern day badass rooted in that traditional strong style warrior mold. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it, the theme is definitely fitting for the guy. I always wonder if they have a say, like I'm sure that, the, the, that you know, writing, they might be watching matches or using whatever they use for inspiration for the tune. But then at the end of the day, dude, they come to the table and be like, all right, we got three, which one do you like better? Right, right, right. And, and how do you pick that if, if you're if you're the wrestler? Um, I always wonder that. I don't know if they do it. I just I'm just throwing that question out there, and and because I'm always curious to that. A lot of times on indie shows, I mean, they're bringing their own music, mind you. But for this, you know, when you have a whole package that you're trying to present, I wonder if they have a, a big say in what they come out to. Moving on now to theme number three, and uh, really, Damon, if we're gonna do an episode of New Japan themes. On episode 69, we got to talk about the man who's all about 69, uh, the funky weapon, Ryusuke Taguchi. And Taguchi is, uh, of course, one of the veterans of the junior division, multi-time junior champion in both the singles and tag divisions. His theme song is by One Track Mind. It's called Master of Dropkick. All the original gangsters Here comes a master of drop kick Am I gonna blow your mind like a bug, man? So get ready now, you never know what I'm gonna do You're gonna witness the strength of the men of the dusty Right? So no more steps Put off your fire! Let's get united
We're going from cool and badass and heavy with the previous themes to a song that is not any of those things. Uh, this one is just fun and wacky, but that's okay because it's Taguchi, and that's who Taguchi is. He's a fun, wacky guy, so of course his theme song is going to be this you know upbeat, bouncy song. And it makes sense as well because his nickname is The Funky Weapon. So his theme song, of course, is going to be this funky jam with the great bass riff and the bongo beats in the intro and the horns that make up most of the song, which are all part of funk music there, Damon. Yeah, this, this is one of my favorites because, as I was talking about before, you know, it's not that, and I'll say it a million times today, I'm sure, but sludge guitar, right? Where, okay, it's cool and it has its place, but this is, this is the complete opposite of that. It stands out. And um, like I just seem to be able to appreciate that a little bit more. Um, it's creative. It's, uh, again, totally different from just about anything else you'll hear on a pro wrestling show. Um, especially for a guy like him. I don't know. It's just He's quirky, but it just fits him. Um, lots of brass, you know, lots of horn. Uh, very little guitar, except in the middle. They have this little guitar middle part where I'm just like, boo, no, <laughs> stick with the horns. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the reggae guy who opens it up um, with his little bit in the beginning. I love this song. I, I, again, I just think it's so different. Um, it's not a bad tune either. Uh, it's almost, dare I say, again, it's a stretch. And again, maybe it's just the horns. But, you know, it's almost ska-like. Um, I love it. I think, it's, I think it's one of my favorite New Japan themes uh, in the past five years. Wow, okay then. Big praise, big praise. Um, to me, the vibe that I get off this song is like Saturday morning kids show. Because mm. it has that kind of zany, manic, colorful vibe to it. And it starts off with the announcer. You know, here comes the master dropkick. You never know what he's going to do. It's like the announcer is introducing Taguchi as the host of the show. And it builds and builds, and then the crescendo hits, and the horns come in, and the song gets all, you know, big energy and fun, and that's when Taguchi comes out, and he's doing all his shtick. That's the kind of vibe I get from this song, which, again, Taguchi is a very colorful, wacky character. It all lines up nicely there, Damon. It does, but you know what, though? It, this song is a risk, right? You gotta have a little bit of balls to come out here to this song, right? Or you just don't care, you know? You're just like, ah, whatever, Right? Uh, like it's not something where people, I like. I don't just don't see many pro wrestlers being like, mm, "Point, that's the one, <laughs> that's the one I'm coming out to." Uh, yet it works for him, it fits, um, and it's completely different. And I can, and I totally appreciate that. And talking about uh, the funky aspect some more, uh, this might be a more minute thing, but uh, funk has always seemed to have this, you know, communal aspect to it. Uh, especially if you look at bands like Parliament Funkadelic or Earth, Wind & Fire, where there's like 50 people on stage at one point, there is that sense of community there. And if you listen closely, right before the horns come in, you hear the words, let's get united. So a little tie into the funk spirit there as well, with that idea of, we're coming together, we're going to have a good time, it's going to be a party, and Taguchi's going to be the MC, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, 100% agree. Again, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but it's one of my favorites. And like I said, in the past five years, because just um, maybe it's the funk, you know, maybe it's maybe maybe I found the beat somewhere in my heart. And, <laughs> and, and that, that's what it is. But it's good. Love it. Uh, 915 stars for me. Up next is the first and only Bullet Club theme of the episode. It's for the Bone Soldier. Not the original Bone Soldier, uh, a.k.a. Captain New Japan, a.k.a. the wrestler who was so bad that Kenny Omega called him an intergalactic disaster. No, I'm talking about uh, the second Bone Soldier, the good one, the Bone Soldier Reborn, Taiji Ishimori who is currently one half of the IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions. His theme is simply called Bone Soldier.
so Toguchi's theme was fun and light and colorful and wacky. Ishimori's theme is not that. It's dark and gritty, and it's it's dirty as well. It just feels unclean. And it's not like Ishimori is this grimy, ugly veteran who you know grinds a guy down. He's actually a uh, very good looking with his great abs, and and b he's a very athletic, smooth wrestler who does lots of cool moves. You know, it's just that he's the Bone Soldier. You know, he's this dangerous guy in the Bullet Club who wears scary masks. So him having this this dark, threatening song, it, it works well for him in that sense. There, Damon. Yeah, then. And that's some of the notes that I had, you know, um, I, I, dark, gloomy, you know, the synths, uh, the sludgy synths, right? Sludgy guitars again, heavy distortion. Um, I, it is weird that you know he is a guy that, you know, you I, again, Bone Soldier. Again, we're Bullet Club. We're a little dark. We're a little grimy. We're a little, you know, all that. Uh, we're a little sneaky, you know. But to me, I don't. I. 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 I it doesn't. Like, I, you're not gonna leave this on the radio if it pops on. Like, if it, if you just have like a general remix, you know, playlist. Like, I don't know if I'm leaving this on. I, it doesn't do much for me. I, I, is it fitting? I, I guess, but it's not one of those things where it's just like, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing. Look, you're not gonna get a hook, that's for sure. But at least in like, and it's a different vibe altogether. But uh, same faction, mind you. Um, even Gods, it, you know, it's grimy, but it's like it's got a. There, there's there there's some substance there where I just don't feel the substance that's here, right? I don't. I, there's nothing I can sink my teeth into on this. Well, you bring up Bullet Club, the way I hear the song, it's like a mix between Bushi's theme and Jay White's theme. Because you've got this kind of grimy, dark EDM mixed with metal there, which is Bushi's theme. But you've also got like a, a creepy factor to it as well. Like, it doesn't have the creepy strings from Jay White's theme, but it does have that unsettling feeling to it. Like, there's those lone piano notes in there. Ding! and creepy choirs and, and odd noises. It's just meant to be unpleasant, which, you know, th there may be a disconnect there between the music and the wrestling style. But as far as what the Bone Soldier gimmick looks like, is meant to be, then it works, I think. Yeah, I mean, I would just, like I said, once this, the bell rings, I just don't feel like that music would match the guy who's in the ring. Like if, like if you just walked in sight unseen, you know, and didn't see in the the intro him walking to the ring and just the bell rings and you see him. I don't know if I, and then you know after the match you hear the song for the first time. I think people might look and be like, wow, okay, that's the guy, that's the, that guy because he didn't wrestle like that, right? Um, so again, it's it's for me on a scale of one to five hundred and sixty five million, it's probably low. <laughs> right? um, it's not one of my favorites. It just doesn't do. It, it, the thing is, it, I don't hate it. It just doesn't stick with me. Well, I'll say this as well. I think Ishimori does a good job of at least uh, matching the entrance to the song. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in the ring, he'll do these springboards and handsprings and, and cool moves and so forth. But when he comes out for his entrance, he's got the mask on and he walks kind of like a zombie where he's kind of like slowly staggering to the ring. So with the entrance, he does do his best to uh, match up that vibe with the song. I agree with that, yeah. Wrestler number five is a member of Suzuki Gun, a uh, former IWGP tag champion, and someone who has really exploded in terms of popularity these past few months, uh, ever since he became a singles guy, and has had some just really great performances like the G1. Uh, it's the American psycho Lance Archer, and his theme song was originally the theme for the Killer Elite Squad tag team that he was in with Davey Boy Smith Jr., but since Davy Boy left New Japan earlier in the year, it's now Archer's singles theme. Uh, this is by Taylor She's Green, and it's called Everybody Dies. <laughs>
so this is the shortest theme on the list here because it's only 90 seconds long. Uh, there is a longer version of it out there, but it's only available on a Killer Elite Squad CD that's only available in Japan. And I'm not getting that, so this will have to do. But even though the song is 90 seconds long, it kicks ass. And it gets across everything just so well. Because you've got the aggressive tone, the crushing metal music, the ominous countdown at the start, the sound drop of Lance screaming, EVERYBODY DIES! the dramatic lyrics that are about how everybody dies, it does a really good job of getting Archer's character and, and style across to the audience in pretty short order there, Damon. Yeah, I feel like this is like one of the ones that stand out like as, okay, this guy's definitely an American pro wrestler, right? Um, I, you know, it, while, while this is playing, you know, I had all the files that you had sent uh, along to me just so I can hear them clean without, you know, color commentating or, you know, play by play over top. Um, and it's like, wow, you could, this, this could very easily, and I mean this as a compliment, mind you, it could very easily be played on any major wrestling promotion here in the United States. You know, like this is going on and I could just see like the, that, that, that boom camera shot, you know, kind of rolling in while he's standing on the, on the, on the turnbuckle, you know, and I, I don't want to, I want to be like, you know, uh, WWE Raw is brought to you by Snickers, you know, <laughs> like I could just see that playing off in my head with this song in the background. It's like one of those most more, again, um, American style, obviously, um, but it's, 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 it, it could easily just fit right into a North, any North American show, and, and it wouldn't, and it wouldn't seem out of place. Right. Yeah. Well, we talked on the last episode that you were on about how the old KES theme, uh, Killer Bomb, worked so well for them because it's this hard and heavy song, and they were a hard and heavy tag team who just beat people up. This song is like taking that same concept and cranking everything up a notch. You know, because it's a little bit faster, a little bit heavier, and the lyrics, even though there's just one verse, they're a bit more serious. Because the lyrics are, everybody dies, and I'm going to take my time. Everybody dies, and I'm the man who's going to make you fall in line. These killers come to life, because everybody dies. It's just repeating that same phrase, everybody dies, over and over again, which is a lot more intense and serious than the previous song, which had the line, put it in a pot, make it sizzle like gumbo. You know, it's a little bit more serious than that there, Damon. A little bit, you know, it's a little bit. But, you know, look, it, it works. Uh, and again, his first 15 seconds coming out from the curtain is is just that. Young lines and getting tossed around and getting elbows to the face and punched in the mouth and thrown through barricades. And so, yeah, I mean, 15 minutes of, of high-tempo heavy rock music uh to to get his blood pumping to get to, to make it through the curtain and start pounding on uh uh young lions so yeah it fits i you know like i said it's polished and it's and it's a professional theme it doesn't seem out of place on any pro wrestling show it, it's uh it's high quality pro wrestling theme and i'll say this too if you've never seen lance archer live do it because as much fun as he is to watch on video it is so much more fun to be there in the building. Uh, not just for the wrestling, which he's great at, but the entrance, too. I mean, like you said there, Damon, he comes out and he's just rampaging to the ring, beating up young lions, making little kids cry, throwing the water bottles around. He sings along and poses in time to his song, and he just he looks like a proper monster with the hair and the leather gear and the screaming and the, how big he is. The guy just has this presence that, that sucks you in and you can't take your eyes off him. And on top of that, he's a great wrestler too, you know? I've been watching him for a very long time and it feels like right now in 2019, this is the best he's ever been. And I'm just so happy that, you know, all the pieces are coming together for him right now and he's getting all this praise, which he deserves so much there, Damon. Yeah, and I think even with all of his experience, like to me... He felt like a guy that even, you know, you had Ishii out there and you had Goto out there uh, in the lobby. I'm talking about, you know, before the show. And Lance Archer was out there. And just 
And I feel like it's something that he has helped himself in developing in the past you know, three years, post back surgery, really. And maybe you just, you know, recuperating, you're thinking about things and how do I want to deliver myself and how do I want to project myself and what do I got to do to seem like uh, I'm, I'm larger than life. Like, didn't he feel to you a guy like, God damn, he's got a presence now. And and the song and his entrance and all of that. And again, having New Japan have some faith in him and, and giving him the, 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 the spot that he has now uh, and growing. Like, it just seemed like he had this newfound aura that I don't know if I felt that, you know, post or, or pre-back surgery. Um, so I don't know. It's weird how pro wrestlers are very creative in their downtime. You know, they think of angles and they think of, oh, I want this gear or, oh, maybe this song might work for me. Um, it's amazing what long commutes will do. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like he has that because there's something that definitely has changed in in three years with Lance Archer. I think motivation helps too, you know, because if you know you're getting a push of some sort, then it's going to motivate you to try your best and try your hardest and get the most out of it and to prove to management that they were right in pushing you. Whereas if you're Joe Schmo working on WWE main event for 50 weeks out of the year and nobody's giving you a chance to go higher up on the card or wherever, where's the motivation? You know, where's the drive to do something great if you're perpetually just stuck in that spot? Archer, they went up to him and said, okay, man, Davey's gone. Show us what you got. You know, we're not going to give you a massive push, but we're going to give you a shot as a singles guy and we're going to put you in the G1. And Archer's like, okay, this is my chance. And he proceeds to have just a string of just great performances against Okada and Osprey and Ibushi and Tanahashi, ZSJ, Bad Luck Folly of all people, you know? Yeah. And it's like he's doing rope walk moonsaults and <laughs> somersaults off the apron and taking Spanish flies and doing all of these things that a guy in his early 40s coming off major back surgery from a few years ago shouldn't be able to do. But he's doing them and combined with his charisma and combined with his presence and combined with, you know, his his character work. It's all gotten him so over these past few months. And it's just proof that with the right spot and the right motivation, you can do great things and get lots of praise for it. And again, Damon, I'm just I'm so happy for the guy. You know, it's an it's amazing when how long has he been in this business? How long is he? I first watched him in 2004 in TNA uh, when he was Kid Cash's bodyguard, Dallas. That's how long I've been watching Lance Archer. I mean, that's got to feel really good when the company finally says, "Okay, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do something here with you." Um, So good for him. Yeah, he made he made the most of that situation. And again, I think the whole package, the song included. Um, Again, the past three years, you've really seen him grow as a, as a performer so good on him good on everyone it's a win-win all the way around moving on now to uh, one of the luchadors in new japan dragon lee former iwgp junior champion and someone who i always enjoy watching because he's just so damn great uh, dragon lee debuted this theme at the 2017 best of the super juniors very simple title for this one it's just called dragon lee Not much to really delve into with this one. Uh, it feels like it's very much 
uh, the hip-hop theme of the episode, uh, even though there's no actual rapping in it. Just the way it sounds with the beats that it's using, and the street vibes with the police sirens in there, and the car starting up at the beginning. Um, which, side note, makes me think of uh, Primus. You know, start her up, man! <laughs> but besides that, it, it, to me, it also sounds like menu music in a street racing video game. Mm. You know, but but yeah, there, there's not much else to uh, really go on there with this one. But uh, I guess for a Dragon Lee theme, it's it's fine for what it is there, Damon. That's a good, that's a good though, with the, with the uh, video. Yeah, that, that, you can definitely see that playing in there, sure. Absolutely, yeah. Engine starting, uh, big beats, um, and again, I like the little use of um, the little, the little sirens, right? The little little, little synthy siren things and that warbly synthy stuff. I like it. It's all right. It's, it's like a you know an inoffensive uh, modern day dancey big beat hip, and again, barely hip hop, but it's you know it's. It's got a nice vibe to it, right? It's got a, it's it actually does have a vibe, and I think uh, for a guy like Dragon Lee, it fits. Um, I can't say it's one of my favorite themes in the entire world, but I think it fits. I think he does a good job with it. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, to me, it's a little weird because I don't really think of Dragon Lee as like a street guy. Like if his gimmick was something similar to Conan, for example, where he's like a Latino gangsta or uh, something like that. That would make a lot more sense there, especially with the police sirens in there and whatnot. But he's not. He's just Dragon Lee. You know, he's the respectful luchador who loves Katsuyori Shibata. So there's a little disconnect there, but it's not that big of a deal. I don't think they're Damon. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, a baby face. I don't know if I want, you know, police sirens in my themes. But yeah, like I said, it's not one of those ones where I'm like uh, instantly like, ugh, this stinks. Uh, it's there. It's good for him. I think there could be better for him, though. And and I'll go so far as to say that I think if uh, he is brought back in a prominent role, which maybe that's a possibility, um, a new theme might be in order. I mean, if I'm being fair to the hip-hop stuff, uh, he does come out to... Um... I guess, I guess he did come out at this point uh, to Nelly and P. Diddy in CMLL. Oh, so, really? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, plus, he had that great hip hop dub theme a few years ago, Come and Get It. I like that one better. Yeah, I do remember that. If you want it, baby girl, if you want what I got, come get it. Well, you know how I keep it high. Come get it. That's how I get when you make it dry. Come get it. Make it pop now. Nah. Let's make it pop. If you want it, baby girl, if you want what I got, come get it. Well, you know how I keep it But the hat can't fit it, the looks is cool, but the game came with it, so what it do, ma? It's me and you, ma. Ain't trying to get too deep, now this ain't scuba. But you might need a wetsuit to get your suit wet. Rick James the man, come see how we do it. I run the town, pick you up round one. Wear pink, just wink if you're down for round one. If you want it, baby girl, if you want what I got, come get it, ma. You know how I keep it high. Come get it, that's how I get when you make it. You know that one? Yes. Yeah, so he, he does have a track record of coming out to... Uh, hip hop songs, even though he isn't like a hip hop wrestler. That's true. He's probably a fan. I mean, lots of, lots of people are. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like the older one better, actually. Now that, I, that you mentioned, I like the older one. Better. Pretty catchy. Right. Pretty catchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, what uh, what Damon and I alluded to a few minutes ago uh, is that uh, a few days ago, uh, Dragon Lee and his brother Roosh uh, got fired by CMLL because they told Dragon Lee not to do Bola. But he did it anyway because it's Bola. It's kind of a big deal. So they fired him. And Roosh won the ROH World title and immediately afterwards told people, hey, I'm leaving CMLL and going independent in Mexico. And CMLL said, you can't quit. You're fired. So it's this whole big mess. And as of right now, it does leave some questions up in the air about... Dragon Lee in New Japan. You know, can he still work there? Can he still be called Dragon Lee? If he stays in New Japan, what does that mean for the New Japan CMLL relationship, you know, or Fantastica Mania? This is a fairly big deal here, Damon, and the ripple effect could be pretty big. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, that kind of ripple effect is, will feel though that vibration, if you will, in the months to come, but yeah, I mean a guy. I mean, listen, they had no problem putting their junior heavyweight title on the guy. 
Um, so they have confidence in him. I'm sure they, they would take him if the commitment were longer than six months, uh, the previous uh, tour. I'd sign him tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he would be he would be getting text messages and phone calls and being wooed as we speak because uh, to me, I mean, name me a bad Dragon Lee match, and they're, 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 you're going to have to go pretty not early many. in the career. Yeah, not many out there. So yeah, he would be one guy that I would be salivating over um, and getting him signed and locked down to a nice, nice juicy two or three year deal. And he clearly loves being in New Japan, too. You know, he loves being in the company. And there's the Hiromu feud when Hiromu comes back. There's the El Desperado feud that's still simmering on in the background. There are stories that still need to be told with Dragon Lee in New Japan. And I know that Super Junior Tag League is coming up really soon. And I believe he was scheduled to be in it before his firing. And I guess, you know, fingers crossed that in the coming days and weeks, the Dragon Lee-New Japan relationship will still be alive and will be alive for a long time going forward there, Damon. Yeah, fingers crossed. And a new theme. <laughs> All right, it's time now to talk about everybody's favorite bag of socks, trademark Damon McDonald, the headhunter Yoshi Hashi, who has never won a title in his entire New Japan career, and gosh darn it, he just can't seem to get over the hump of being a mid-card schlub, but you know what? He's our mid-card schlub. And his theme is by a composer named Ebola, which is uh, somehow pretty appropriate there for Yoshihashi, I think. It's called Headhunter. So there are a couple of things about this song that I truly love. Uh, first of all, that intro, because it starts off with that Casio keyboard setting that everybody played with back in the day, you know, the ha ha ha, oh, ha ha ha, and then the futuristic electronica bits come in, you know, and it's building up and it's building up and it's building up and it goes for like 30 seconds. Then there's the big sweeping keyboard. And it's like, yeah, here we go. Here comes Yoshihashi. And it's so perfect because it's supposed to get you really pumped up for Yoshihashi. But you can't get pumped up for Yoshihashi. It's pretty much impossible. You know, you can get like a... Ah, all right, for Yoshihashi, but that's about as far as it goes. So every time they do that prolonged build-up intro for Yoshihashi, it just makes me chuckle so much there, Damon. It's a shame, isn't it? Poor guy. He just doesn't have it. <laughs> and that's okay, I guess. But yeah, I mean, and, and listen, they have the, he, he has the, uh, you know, the uh, Charlie Brown fan club, uh, you know, wanting to love the lovable loser. Um, now trying to rally around him, which is, I, I find, they uh, really try hard. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, no, look. What are you going to do? Um, 17 songs in one, in in one theme. If you listen to this, you're right. It has that little Casio keyboard sounding. I, I Again, not to use a, uh, a Depeche Mode reference, but it sounds like this uh, song, Little 15, that they do. Um, that it's, it has that kind of, I, yeah angelic choiry kind of thing going on may i also um, suggest enjoy the silence 
Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 So they used that a lot. They used that a lot in many songs, and Yoshihashi decided to take a little bit from Martin Gore, apparently. Um, and then it breaks into the yeah that wah wah e guitar, and it and then it like I said, it turns into this almost legit retro '90s Japanese wrestling theme. And I really like it. And then it turns into a, like another bit where it's like this funky guitar. It's almost like Nile Rogers. Wee! Was the, yeah, right, Wee! right. Wee! Yeah, and I'm like, wow, this is okay. You know, it's almost you know again, it's got that Nile Rogers groove to it. Um, and and I and again, the note that I have, it's like this is like seven songs in one. You you don't know like once you start getting into one part, you don't, you know it changes up. Um, which is so unlike Yoshihashi because it's the same thing you get every time. Um, but look, uh, I don't hate this. I don't hate – I like his theme more than I like him. Let's put it that way. <laughs> his theme is more exciting than him, just like you talked about. Uh, and this isn't kick Yoshihashi when he's down. This is not this. But uh, I talked about how it felt like you had Bone Soldier. Uh, Ishimori in, in a theme that didn't fit him, right? It feels like it just doesn't feel like that, and and there wasn't a lot to sink your teeth into. I feel just the opposite, where it's like the, the song is better than the guy, right? right? You could listen to the song and kind of be like, I right, cool, and then you're right, it's like, oh, it's but it's on him. <laughs> and I get it. I'll watch the entrance, and that'd be fine. So, uh, love the theme. The wrestler bag of socks. <laughs> well, the rest of the song is perfect too because it's it's as perfectly average as Yoshihashi is. You know, it, it's not going to be considered a great wrestling theme, but at the same time, it's not going to be a poor wrestling theme either. You know, it, it rests comfortably in that creamy, nougaty, forgettable middle, and that's Yoshihashi. He's not the best. He's not the worst. He's right there in that forgettable, perfectly fine middle. Right. Hence, the bag of socks. Because <laughs> you're not over the moon about a bag of socks because it's a bag of socks. But you're also not offended by it either because it's a bag of socks. So it's a pretty apt metaphor there, Damon. It is. But here's the thing, though. Every once in a while, Andrew, every once in a while you put on that most fucking comfortable pair of warm socks. It is pretty cool, nice, yeah. It's nice, right? <laughs> so every once in a while, that bag of socks, you're like, you know, I'm kind of glad I got that fucking bag of socks two months ago, right? Now I'm like, all right, this is this is all right. But then again, you know, it's a bag of socks, right? Hard to get excited. All right, cool. Well, I do as well want to bring up the entrance because he does himself no favors there at all because – Every time he comes out for a match, whether it's a main event or an opening match or a title match or whatever, he always has this look on his face like he's about to shit his pants. Like, you know, because the comparison I always make is that it's like he's in a body swap movie and he's trying to just get through the day without any major incident because he just he doesn't look comfortable or natural in his own skin. Yeah. And it's hard to get invested in a guy who just always looks so nervous. I mean, granted, when you trip and fall and injure yourself trying to save Okada at Destruction last year during you know, your, your shining moment, that'll fuck with you mentally, I think. But he was like that even before that happened. He just doesn't have that confidence, Damon. I mean, it doesn't project it very well. But here's the thing. It's weird what people gravitate to, you know? They're, look, I, I, you know, I made fun of it a little bit but truth be told there are people that dig him for that very reason because he feels uncomfortable and for whatever reason people feel like you know there's a pocket of of fan that says ah oh, i can kind of relate to that because i have imposter syndrome you know when i go to work i don't you know uh, there is that and and i'm sure there's there 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 is that element where you, people can be like i can really connect with this guy <laughs> because i'm living it um, so in that sense, uh, I can see that I get that, you know, for me, I, I kind of want the, the escapism of, of pro wrestling to, to, it's kind of like my bands. I don't want my bands to look like they push carts at a Walmart. 
right? I want you to look like a fucking band. I want you to be in a gang, and I want you to kick my ass from the stage, right? Um, and I kind of want that in my pro wrestling, right? I kind of want that magic that 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 is. To, but I get the fact that that the the bag of socks is warm and comforting, and to some people, that's exactly what they want in their pro wrestling. So, okay, cool. You 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 have that with Yoshihashi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do find him endearing as a lovable loser. You know, the the caring mother in me is like, leave him alone. He's trying his best. (laughs) But, you know, all all jokes aside, he's a decent enough wrestler and he spoke to his level as mid-card fodder. You know, he'll get the occasional never match. He'll get the occasional tag title match. But that's about it, really, which is just fine for him. Yep. The world needs the stickers too, Danny. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> the great Caddyshack, uh, uh, Ted Knight. Uh, but yes, it, that quote couldn't uh, ring truer for Yoshihashi. Moving on now to our next wrestler and theme, and uh, it's for another veteran junior, a crafty veteran at that. It's the heel master, Yoshinobu Kanamaru from Suzuki Goon, a former junior tag champ, and uh, someone who has been a top junior in other companies like All Japan and NOAA. And now he's in New Japan, spitting whiskey, and being a real bastard. Kanamaru's theme is called Sly Boots. So this is one that, like Ishimori's theme, is just so gritty. Uh, it's not as EDM-y as Ishimori's theme is, but it does just sound so grimy and so dirty. Uh, very much like an industrial metal kind of mix. You know, the, the kind of low-ranging guitars are all down and dirty. The percussion is, sounds sort of like a steel clanging together, and the cymbals sound kind of like steam blowing. It, it's a very unpleasant sound there, Damon. Yeah, it's for lack of a better term and one that I made up in my notes it's like uh, like retro-y again industrial-y and, and again grimy uh, all in the same boat um, once again sludges with the, with the synths uh, I have a note here with a punctuation beat um, so yeah I don't I mean I, again it's Bullet Club I, I it, it sounds Suzuki Goon Oh, it's my bad, Suzuki Goon, right? So, yeah, um, I mean, you, you're expecting that heel dynamic, almost. And again, I don't want to cheat just because he he spits the the whiskey, mind you. It, it, it sounds like like drunky, right? I, as I, you know what I mean. It does have this this kind of plod and this kind of uh, I think a drunky is the the adjective I have written down, um, and I think that is best to describe that like like maybe uh maybe that moment when you have one too many and uh it could either turn into a really great night or it could turn into a real horrible night and that's that's where i feel we are with this song we're drunk uh and but we're on a slippery slope and it can go wrong and sideways real quick i don't know if you heard this as well but um i heard that main riff that and I, I kind of heard the industrial sound too, and, and I made this connection here. It sounds kind of similar to, I think, Du Hast by Ramstein. Um, I, don't, I don't think Kanemaru is a big Ramstein fan himself, maybe, but uh, still, I, I couldn't help but notice the similarities in the melody there, Damon. Yeah, very, very early 90s industrial sound, right? Um, Ministry, maybe? Yeah, yeah, or uh, the Nitzarab, 
or uh, uh, KMFDM or uh, even even Front 242, you know, maybe a little bit. Um, but that's, that, that's, uh, that's that, you know, that heavy, hard sound, I mean, with synths. That's electronic music That's that's got that heavier, more punchy beat. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I have it written down with the punctuation beat. It fits. Again, I just, I have written down drunk. Um, with an, literally, you can see my notes. I have drunk with an arrow pointing down to to <laughs> to say, oh, this is this is this is the bad side of drunk right now. Yeah, I guess to uh, sum up everything here with this one, it just makes total sense then that you know it's kind of Maru and he's this grimy, crafty veteran in Suzuki Goon. Him having this unfriendly sounding song is just a good fit for him, and uh, I love the title as well, Sly Boots, because. Kanamaru is a sly bastard who loves to cheat, and he's got some nice boots as well. So him having a song called Sly Boots is a nice little reference there, Damon. I like that too. I'm going to name a playlist that, I swear. (laughs) The second to last theme of the episode here is for another wrestler who is from a partner promotion, uh, in this case Ring of Honor. Although that partnership's been a little bit uh, shaky lately, shall we say. It's Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb. Uh, Cobb, a former never openweight champion, and his theme is called Eater of World. So again, not a ton to say about this one, uh, but for a, a Jeff Cobb theme, it definitely fits quite well because this song has just so much girth to it. You know, there's just so much weight and heft to this song with the big pounding guitars and pounding drums. You can really feel it in the music, just how heavy it sounds. And Jeff Cobb is a big boy himself, so all of this heaviness in the music works so well for him you know, to emphasize his large frame there, Damon. Yeah, monsters, right? Bombs and monsters going off. It opens up with that that slide guitar. Um, but also with that heaviness, there is this kind of little subtle thing in the back if you listen. And I don't know if you got this because I, I mean, I'm hearing it, and 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 it's one of those things that just kind of instantly was like, wow, this really feels like it. I don't know if it was inspired by or or maybe you know the the, the, the muse of of the, this old wrestling theme help inspire this one did you get that a jake roberts feel a jake roberts that 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 synth that it's kind of uh like an almost spooky synth that was in jake's theme i felt it in this song too like underneath yeah there's this heaviness but then there's this kind of weird and again it reminded me of jake roberts theme um and the main riff of it in this song did you hear that you mean the down, 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 yeah. down, 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 down? Uh, I did not think of Jake Roberts at all there. No, no. I thought of Jake Roberts. I mean, again, maybe it's just the the chord structure, the, the way that I it just felt that I heard that in there. So I'm going to listen to that again and be like, was I insane <laughs> when, when hearing this? Uh, I got to hear it again because I that, that I mean that's what I felt when I and and I heard Jake Roberts theme underneath in this song. I did not hear that at all. No, no. But uh, with that riff specifically, though, I, I did hear another reference. Um, that one being to Godzilla and the old Godzilla yeah. movies. You know, I, I could picture in my head Godzilla coming into frame and attacking the city or whatever. You know, down, 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 down. There's even at the beginning that deep boom, boom, boom. 
like a giant monster stomping its way around. And then the big monster roar. Jeff Cobb, again, is like a big monster just tossing guys around with ease. And, fun fact, the original title of the song was Dinosaur. So it all ties together there, Damon. Yeah, yeah, definitely, like I said, bombs and a monster, right? <laughs> right? Um, you know, he, he is a monster, so it's pretty fitting, I would say. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Jeff's got a, a future in Kaiju, right? He could go and, like, you know, he, he fight, fight a real Godzilla. Come on, do it. It'd be great. Uh, but yeah, I like this one a lot too. I I, I dig it. Uh, now, see, now I'm like, why don't I put Jake Roberts? Because I had had this here at somewhere. Um, go back and listen and, and see if I, I'm, I'd be curious if people uh, hear that as well. You did not, but I don't know. Maybe I was out in space somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, uh, Jake Roberts was very methodical and a lot more subdued. Uh, whereas this theme is, you know, for the big monster who is very explosive and powerful and out there. So again, I did not make the connection there at all, but uh, hey, if you did, hey, more power to you, I guess. <laughs> something underneath there. There's something underneath, like I said, a little synth part that had me feeling it. All right, I won't, I won't beat the dead horse on that one. Time now for the final theme of the episode. And uh, the last theme we did on the first New Japan Grab Bag uh, was for uh, the legendary Jushin Thunder Liger. Uh, this one is for Liger's tag partner and uh, fellow Elder Grump of the roster, Tiger Mask 4. And uh, much like Liger, Tiger Mask has won all the junior belts and he's won the super juniors. And at this point, he's just, you know, chugging along as a veteran on the roster. His theme song is the same as the original Tiger Mask and Tiger Mask 3 as well. It's by Toru Matsumura off the album The Wrestler. It's called Omai wa Tora ni Nare. <laughs> translation to Omai wa Tora ni Nare is you're becoming the tiger or become the tiger or whatever and even though I couldn't find lyrics to it online or, or translate lyrics or whatever you can kind of get the gist of what it's about pretty easily I think based on context you know become the tiger fight with honor tenacity and what and whatnot and what I like the most about it is that it's just so charming you know with the tiger roars at the beginning and uh, the go, go, tiger, go, go, tiger, and kind of the synth roars in there as well with the bow, bow. You know, it's just, it just has that old school charm to it, which makes sense because I think it's the oldest song in use on the roster right now, Damon. Yeah, aside from, you know, some of the music that they'll use for, um, you know, some of the bits and even the opening of the shows. I mean, they've been using the Emerson Lincoln Powell. For since what seventy two at least seventy three, um, yeah, retro as hell, right? A uh, classic, and it kind of checks all the boxes when it comes to wrestling themes. It's, you get there's sing along parts for the crowd, uh, a nice little running bass line in that, right? Uh, the horns again, very retro sounding and very um, grand, uh, you know, signaling somebody that's that's pretty important, right? With the regalness, maybe, of, of, uh, of a tiger mask. Love it. And again, uh, it always puts a smile on my face uh, hearing it uh, because it hasn't changed. It's like a, it's like a classic meal. It's like, a, it's like uh, you know, you're not straying too far away. It's, it, it, it is comforting. And again, one of the rare few uh, nowadays, it seems like, where you have lyrics. 
and think about all those lyrics uh, or the, those songs that are, are are iconic in in New Japan even right now. I mean, look at Suzuki, uh, Liger. Um, you're singing along. There's words, um, and this one has it, and the horns, and the regalness, and and the pomp. Uh, it's, one, it's one of my favorites, actually. Well, you bring up Liger. It definitely feels like a predecessor to Liger's theme because it's very old school and the production sounds a lot older and it uses the horns and the acoustic guitars, but you still feel that same sense of classic heroism that you do in Liger's theme. So even though Liger's theme is more up-to-date-ish, you know, it does sound a lot cooler and does sound a lot more badass with the guitars and the synths and whatnot. Tiger Mask's theme will always be the one that came first. And uh, the same is true for the characters as well, because Tiger Mask, the character, and the wrestler uh, very much set the tone for Jushin Thunder Liger down the line. Yeah. Yeah, the the passing of the torch, so to speak, right? It does. And again, Liger's might be a a more updated version of what we have here. um, And again, I don't think Liger is necessarily an update of of Tiger Mask, because we do have Tiger Mask here. It's, I don't know, there is something to be said about a very classic theme that on, on an iconic pro wrestler um, that, that kind of stands the test of time uh, and you, and you could hear it now and get just as excited as maybe they did back in the eighties. I don't know, but um, it does tug at the heartstrings a little bit to say, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's remember back when for a second or two and people do it right now. I mean, people, you know, if you were to, again, I'm just trying to get, get yeah, you hear that, that all Japan theme music, right? I mean, that's old as dirt, but you're still tapping your toes and clapping along. Um, it's one of those things, you know, Brody song, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, uh, immigrant song. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's just classic and, and you're tapping along. And, and it helps that Led Zeppelin, <laughs> you know, made it a classic. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 there's, there is something to be said about the comforting of a warm embrace of something that you're very familiar with. To me, it has like a legendary folk tale kind of feel to it, you know, especially with those horns and the acoustic guitars. It just conjures up these images of Tiger Mask as a sort of folk hero coming in to save the day and, and be the good guy, which goes in line with the real life lineage of the character, you know, going from the original Tiger Mask Sayama to Tiger Mask 2 Misawa to Tiger Mask 3 Kanamoto. And now to the current one, Tiger Mask 4. The mantle just gets passed down generation to generation to keep the folktale going. And eventually, Tiger Mask 4 will retire, and he will pass down the mantle to the next guy. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, we don't, you know, some things don't need to change. And again, we're going to grow, and this character will never go away, I feel like. Uh, At least from a Japanese pro wrestling, maybe not even a New Japan, maybe it goes on somewhere else, but... Uh, I think keeping that theme is vital to the, to any kind of success Tiger Mask has. All right, well, that was our second round at the New Japan Grab Bag. Uh, I imagine some of you listening are wondering uh, where the G.O.D. theme is or where the El Phantasmo theme is. Uh, I have those penciled in for the 2019 Year in Review episode in December. So don't worry, I didn't forget about them. They're coming later on. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of Music of the Mat. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. And uh, Damon, thank you so much for being here because this was just so much fun. It is always my pleasure. Uh, Andrew is uh, such a great dude. Uh, Funny. I I tell him all the time. He is maybe the driest, funniest guy I've ever met. Uh, Makes me laugh every time I see him. Um, And again, here as well. So... Again, the pleasure is all mine. I really appreciate coming on, and uh, I would love to do it again sometime soon. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, any plugs you want to give, go right ahead. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, we do uh, a weekly New Japan Pro Wrestling show, and it's called the Super J-Cast, and it's with my uh, co-host, the great Joel Abraham. And uh, each and every week, we talk a, l- a little bit about New Japan for about two or three hours. So if you haven't listened before, by all means, hop on. Uh, we do... Uh, you know, we uh, we kind of uh, let it fly, as they say. So you might it might take us a little bit to get to the actual New Japan talk, but uh, I feel like we do a good job with that. So uh, give us a listen if you haven't, and you can follow us 
uh, on the Twitter at the Super Jcast. And you'll also hear some stingers from a very familiar voice on that show. <laughs> you know, I thought I'd give a little plug yeah. for myself there, Damon. You know what I mean? Absolutely, he does. He does a lot of cool production work for us and creative stuff. Uh, and again, always, always makes me laugh when I when I hear these things. So, uh, again, I, I, I from the bottom of my heart, Hall of Famer, by the way. That's right. Yeah, Hall of Famer, Super Chick has Hall of Famer, Andrew Rich. So, uh, a tip of the cap to him. And Music of the Mat is part of the Voices of Wrestling podcast network, just like the Super J cast is. You can check out all of the great podcasts on there at VoicesOfWrestling.com. Follow the show on Twitter at Music of the Mat. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew T. Rich. Check out the YouTube playlist for this and all past episodes at the VOW forums. That's VoicesOfWrestling.com slash forum. If you want to show your appreciation by donating to the podcast, you can do so at RedCircle.com slash shows slash music dash of dash the dash mat. The link is available in the show's Twitter header. And of course, rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many other places. Uh, Damon, thank you again, and I'll see you around. Yeah, got it. Thanks, man. All right. For Damon McDonald, I'm Andrew Rich, and I'll see you next time on Music of the Mat. Take care, guys. Music of the Mat is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The songs used throughout this show are property of their respective copyright holders.